Good afternoon, everybody. How are we? I'm back. I'm back again. Chatting to myself at home. Not really. I know you guys are there. Somebody's there. Is anybody there? Let me just make sure that I'm live. There we go. Turn the comments on so I can see who's watching. Ah, Amanda's back. Hello. Hello. All right. How has everybody's day been? Is anyone doing anything exciting and awesome today? Hey, Kelly. No, no. All right. So this is my last... <laughs> hey, Marina. My last live Facebook for today. Um, I am absolutely exhausted, but that's okay. It's part of this wonderful sport called paper crafting. Um, resting in bed. Oh, that would be a nice place for me to be today. Um, okay, so today as part of the Great International Craft Show, I will be able... Oh, hello, Susie. I will be showing you about alcohol inks. Um... The alcohol inks today only are 15% off on nataliemay.com.au. So what that means for you guys is that you can jump on and take advantage of these awesome specials. Um, I have been creating up an absolute storm today and trying to prepare for classes that are happening next week as well. Um, so, yeah, have been having a super busy day here in the studio. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today, though, is I'm going to have a bit of a play with alcohol inks and showing you how to use them with the texture fades and showing you uh, some, some little cool tips and tricks with alcohol inks. These are some of the cards, or two cards that I've made before on live Facebooks. Um... And they are some bonus bits there. Um, and I added the silhouettes from Scrap Effects over the top. So I think that these look really gorgeous. And I love that um, we can get these sort of effects. And I will just pop those aside and show you some other cool things. So what we've been doing as part of, as part of the Great Australian Craft Show or Great International Craft Show is we have been doing a daily deal so today's daily deal like i mentioned is a 15 percent discount off of tim holt's products across the board um, except for the inks and the other thing that we have on special other alcohol inks so i'm just dipping into my little sample my little swatch pad here so i can show you some bits and pieces that we can do with alcohol inks and how amazing they look like when they are dry. Now, this these are this is so so very easy to do. As you can see from some of my little swatches, I'm just pulling out to the side here. They are gorgeous. I I love bright colors, so gorgeous and bright, and can make amazing backgrounds for cards and art journal pages and projects. Uh, you can do all sorts of bits and pieces. I really love that. Um, you can do so much. So I thought what I'd do today is have a bit of a play with colours. It's so hypnotising to watch. Uh, and I can talk you through some easy techniques. And then hopefully if I get the time, I will have a bit of a play with uh, popping it into a uh, onto an art journal page or making a couple of cards or something like that. So just here, I have got my personal stash of um, alcohol inks. I have got everything in here from glittery ones through to metallic ones, through to the fluoros and bits and pieces. The container that they are in is the travel case from Couture Creations. And this holds 60 of the alcohol inks and is an excellent way to transport your alcohol inks and i think they retail for around 40 dollars, which is fantastic value for money 
Um, so I will have this just off camera a little just so that it is out of the way and that I have more room here to play with. I, as most of you may or may not know, um, alcohol inks are exactly that. They are made out of an alcohol solution and they are super strong. Um, they react differently to a lot of other paints and inks and things like that. So the difference with alcohol inks is you must use, in order to get a really awesome effect like this and for the ink to flow nicely on the paper, you do need a couple of things. You've got to have Yupo paper. You've got to have this synthetic plastic feeling paper. And the reason being, if we were to do it on normal paper, it would soak right into the paper and the ink, ink wouldn't move. So I'll be working today on Yupo. The other thing that we do need is an alcohol blending solution. This will help make the inks flow really nicely on the page. Um, <laughs> and I, I use this stuff all the time. This is an excellent thing to have handy. The other thing that I have handy is a heat tool. I need a heat tool because I like to move it around and help speed up the drying time. Uh, what I would like to do today is I'm going to show you, first of all, of course, how to use it on just plain white cardstock by itself. So I've just got some pre-cut pieces down to six by four, and I'm going to grab a series of blues out of my little stash here. And I might throw in a green for good measure. Okay, so what I like to do first is give them all a little bit of a shake and get the lids off. So the colours that I know that I'm going to be using, I like to have the lids off ready to go on my workspace so that I can work quickly and effectively. This way I can let the ink flow around the page and I don't, and it's not going to dry while I'm trying to get the lid off of something, okay? Uh, so I'm just going to lay down a, I might actually just zoom up just a fraction. Hang on. Hold on to your uh, screens for a second. Come on. Come on. Oh, sorry. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay. So what we are going to do is I'm just going to squirt on some blending solution. Now, I'm really quite generous with my colour. Okay, I love it when I can see where the colour is going to go. I tend to like to use colours that I know are going to mix in quite nicely together. So still following the rules of the colour wheel, I won't use anything that is going to muddy and go like look revolting. Okay, creature of habit there. So I can let that sit and move around and sit just like this. I can grab my heat tool and blow it around with the heat tool and that assists with the drying. Um, so I'm going to do that. I can go in and add a little bit more green. But you can see how the ink is sitting on the paper rather than soaking in. And that's exactly what we are looking for. Okay. And I'm just going to use my piece of paper towel here. to soak up a little on the edge and that's what we've got we've got this gorgeous little image here I can also take I've got a pipette here and this is just plain isopropyl alcohol that I have bought from Bunnings and I can add that to the side and loosen up the inks a little and create something a little bit different okay works best when it's wet And I can move that around with the heat tool. 
to lighten the colour and get a more fluid flowing sort of effect. So I'm just going to let that sit aside to dry, but you kind of get the idea there. You get something that looks really pretty. So if I do one now, um, I'll do one in some different colours just to show you again. I'm just going to slide those over to the side and let's do something a little bit brighter. I am not afraid of fluorescent colours. In fact, I really love the way that fluoros react with this paper. So I have got here, um, I've got like a hot pink, I've got red, I've got orange and I've got yellow. So I need to give them a good shape first. move those all around. I love that these ones actually dry and they're a little bit more opaque and I'm going to cover my whole page this time. Um, doesn't matter which colour I start with. I didn't take my lids off. I should have done that first but holy moly that's gorgeous and bright. Wow. Wow. I don't think the camera is actually doing it justice at all. Um, not even close, okay. I think the red's my favorite. Okay, let's move this around on the, whoops, paper. And I'm going to use just a little bit of that alcohol fluid in the pipette on the edges to help move it to the edges. Suck it up and through there. Wow. There's my tweezers. Okay. So you can kind of see what's happening. It is moving around with that alcohol ink. Now this time I've kind of blending all the colors together a bit but I'm just gonna give it a second to settle and dry with the help of my heat gun. And then I'm going to add another color over the top. And then I'm just picking it up on the paper towel and moving it around. So you get something really, really cool. I'm gonna pop that one aside to dry um, and air dry a little. I really do need to learn to leave it alone and not play with it so much. But you know. Okay. Um, I just need to find somewhere for that to sit and dry. I've got a little workspace issue today. Louisa's left me. She's gone home. Let me just make a clean spot over there. I've sent her home for the day, so I don't even have anybody else here in the room to um, annoy. Uh, <laughs> something else I really, really love to do is use the Tim Holtz texture fades and the Ultra New embossing folders. Um, I love these. So this is the brand new one. This one only arrived a couple of days ago. This one is called Swirls. Uh, there's no reason why I can't run these through my machine with the Yupo paper. So that's what I've done. This one here is called Botanical, Crackle, and then this is the Ultra New Geo Steps, and finally the Perfect Poinsettias. So I'm using these two, whoops, um, to create my papers, some pattern on my papers. And I'm just grabbing them for you. Okay, so I have got here a pile of pre-embossed images. So I just ran these through my machine, uh, embossed them, and these are the 3D ones. So you can see, hopefully on camera, how that's come up. 
Um, they look really, really awesome. So that is gorgeous by itself. So I have used some of the translucent paper here as well as the white. Uh, that is the flourishy one. Then this is the new one that came out. Then the crackle. And I've done these before and they look so good. And then the leaves, etc. So I'm just going to start creating with this. Um, how am I going to do this so I don't run out of room? Right, let's just pop all of these off to the side there. And I might start with, I've picked up the crackle first. What side am I going to use? It's pretty much the same on both sides, but I think I like this side better. It's kind of got that more dimpled sort of look. So I'm really excited about the way that the Yupo paper is going to grab the colour. Um, okay, so I've got, let's do this one in pink. And I've got some glitter. I'm just picking up random colours here. This is not working for me. Just bear with me. Just chat amongst yourself, girls. Well, I pull them all out because I just can't see what I need quickly. So, there we go. Oh. Radio. Now we're talking. Now we are cooking with gas. Right. I've got a hot mess of inks here, but it works. So let's go with, I've got some honey, I've got copper, and I've got, where is a darker colour? I need something a little bit darker. Wine. Wine, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Chrissy Mannix. How are you, my lovely friend? So this one is a metallic, so I have to give it a good shake first. And let's just crack into it, okay? I've wasted too much time. So I've got my blending solution down first and I'm just running it all over here. And then I'm gonna pop on some honey next. And I'm just shaking it on, not overthinking it, just getting it on there. And look how it grabs in those pre-embossed, but you could use any embossing folders. If you have embossing folders from your cuttle bug from back in the day, number one, you are not alone. Um, but this is the time to use them. I just love the way that the gravity moves them around and it is all done just with that little bit of movement. You don't need to I, look, you can get all of the fancy blending tools, but I am all about uh, gravity and movement and allowing it to merge and do its own thing. So now if I hit this with the heat tool, I love that. And you can still see how it's um, landing in all those little valleys. So I'm just gonna pop that one aside. Uh, if I do the same thing with the transparent paper, let me show you how that works. So I'll use the glitter ones this time. So um, I just threw these over here. And threw half of the glitter ones off to one side, didn't I? I didn't grab them. Blue, I need that glitter. All right, here we go. Just, whoa, sorry guys. Just trying to do a little adjustment on my camera here. Oh, stuff it, that'll do. Okay, 
the question there was, what is the difference between the heat tool and the one you used in an earlier live? Uh, the earlier one that I used is a, it pushes out less air. This heat tool that I'm using here has got more power to it. So that is what I wanted to use that for, okay? So this one is a, has got more, a little bit more love to it in the sense that it's got, it's just going to push out a bit more air and push the ink around a bit more, okay? So the other one was more about drying and this heat tool that I'm using is more about, um, yeah, pushing the air around, okay? If that makes sense. So I've added some glitter. Now, can you see that glitter? Is that showing up on camera? The glittery alcohol ink. I think it looks bloody awesome from here. Dun, 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 dun. What a shocking mess here, guys. And I'm just going to let that one do its thing. And then I want to grab ice blue in a metallic. Pop that over the top and hit that with the heat tool and let that dry. So just a bit of a tip, this is a plastic synthetic paper, which means if you hit it with the heat tool too much, what's going to happen? It's going to damn well melt. So you just need to move it around, not cook the heck out of it, okay? Um, if that makes sense. Uh, so this time I have got that Flourish. This is the new Flourish and it is on the transparent Yupo. So I'm going to go with a, oh, a, I've got a peach in a glitter here. I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to mix it with that bubblegum one. Let's do that. So you just give them a little shake first. Get all that good stuff stuck off the bottom there. Um... This time I'm just going to put down a little spray of plain isopropyl alcohol. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So pretty. So that colour is called bubblegum. And this peach glitter has got the most gorgeous blue shimmer to it that is absolutely lovely uh i might it needs a bit of depth it's a bit nice but it's a bit it could do with a bit more depth uh how do you attach yupo paper to cardstock what glue i have great difficulty um i tend to use a stapler to be perfectly honest uh that is my go-to when it comes to putting yupo paper on anything uh, and I hide my staples under the embellishments. Uh, so that is what I work. Uh, you're not the only one that has problems. There's no magic trick to Yupo paper other than really good adhesive. Okay. Um, excellent uh, double-sided tape will make all the difference as well. Not using, not using uh, double-sided tape from a cheap shop. That makes a massive difference. Um, I know a lot of people tend to go, oh, that's okay. I'll just go to the one, the two-dollar shop and buy a a roll of tape. Please don't do that. We're grown-ups, people. Um, but use some good quality tape. I will be talking on Sunday. I'm going to do a live Facebook on Sunday, uh, which is going to be. I'm going to do my favourite tools series again because I really loved doing that last time I did it. Um, so stay tuned for that on Sunday. 
Um, I've got a new embossing folder here. So I'm just going to crack on through and keep on playing uh, just so that they don't take forever to dry. Let's do another one here with... I've got some slate grey. And I'm going to be... I'm going to pop in some black and some glitter black. And move it around. Now, there are some very... If you have a look on YouTube, you will find hours and hours and hours of tutorials on different things that you can do with alcohol inks. Well, you can use a blending tool to move them around. You can do, you know, create flowers and these amazing pieces of artwork. Uh, there's so many really, really cool things to do. Uh, my personal preference and what I am comfortable with is keeping it simple. Simplicity, I find, works best uh, for me. Um, oh, wow. Wow. But it comes down to what, what you like. If you are someone who prefers a more direct, smudgy sort of look, then absolutely go for it. Me personally, I am more of a washy, blotchy, effortless looking yet slightly planned girl. Oh, that's gorgeous. And as it dries, it is pulling in and amongst those, those shapes of the embossed cardstock. So making these backgrounds for cards, like seriously easy. Righty, oh, let's pop that one aside watching the clock has anyone got anywhere to be you don't mind me cracking on here making waffling on obviously not because you're hanging out with me for the night for the afternoon so this one i'm going to do more of a metallic -y sort of look so i've got a champagne i've got smolder which is like a um or cloud i think it's called which is more of a um, lighter colour. Giving it a good shake. What's that one? Rose gold. Ooh. And Nairi, if you're watching, I've got yours, um, yours stashed here as well. All right, so this time I'm not going to put down any base. I'm going to go alcohol ink straight on. I'm not going to put down a base of blending fluid just to show you what happens so that was rose gold now copper and I'm going to pop some champagne on the edges and then I'm just going to use oh you are watching I didn't even know you were there sweetheart um, I'm just going to use my heat gun to move those around and my pipette And I'm going to use a paintbrush that I'm dipping in the fluid just to blend some of those bits together. So this time it's just playing. Play, 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 play. What would happen if that is how I create anything? What would happen if? I'm a huge believer in, in trial and error. And that is how I have found some of my, my best mistakes have been some of my most amazing pieces of art. These work really well over alfoil and metal tape as well. So if you have, oh, I don't know, going back years and years and years ago for the people in the, in the room who have uh, been crafting for as long as me, 
scrapbooking, scrapbook creations magazine. Hands up if you remember that. I did an article uh, on how to use alcohol inks with metal tape and alfoil and putting it with um, chipboard shapes underneath and all sorts. It was just the best. It was so much fun and really loved doing that project. But I just did this really cool, I wonder where it is actually, scrapbook layout. Um, using alfoil. Who here remembers those magazines? I've still got a pile of them. I really need to do something with them. God help me. Um, I just can't bear to throw them out. I just can't, just can't bring myself to throw out those old magazines. Um, who else has got them? I can't see any comments. Where's all my comments gone? There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, Rebecca, you remember. All right. So, um, <laughs> so this is that lovely embossed one again. I'm going to go with some of this jade. So I have got a metallic jade. I've got kiwi. And I'm going to put down my blending fluid first. I'm going to show you in a minute as well what I'm going to do with some of these or what I've done with them in, a, in the past. I have used them in my art journal and I'm going to do a little finished page in a second. I just wanted to get these on first. Bit of fluoro. And a bit of that metallic. Let's move this one around with the heat gun. Oh, Somerset. Oh, I love Somerset. My lovely Miss Jessica was on the cover of Somerset magazine at some stage in the UK. Um, some lovely artwork by the super uber talented Louise Nelson. She created a project with my Miss Jessica on the front cover. I bet you've probably got that in your stash, Kirsteen. Um, I know I've got a photo somewhere of Jessica holding the cover of that, but I haven't seen it in years. I don't know where it is. I really, I should probably dig it out actually. Um, the difference between the blending fluid and the isopropyl alcohol, the blending fluid has got, um, some more magic in it. I actually like the blending fluid significantly more than the isopropyl alcohol. I find that the, um, the plain alcohol just doesn't work the same as the blending solution um, at all. In fact, I find that it just works completely different. Um, I've even done it, and don't judge me, this is a judgment-free zone, ladies. I've even done it with some straight um, alcohol. So I'm talking like grappa sort of vodka sort of straight alcohol, right? So, um, and it doesn't work the same. I have tried all the things because like you, I do that whole um, cost cutting thing and go, oh, do I really need to open another bottle of blending fluid? Yeah, I actually do need to open another bottle of blending fluid. There is a reason why it works differently, okay? So, um, so that color is the is mulberry. I'm just going to give that a second to dry a little and then I just want to drop a couple of other colors over the top. Don't quite know how it's going to go but I'm going to go with hot pink and because it is a fluorescent the color has settled in the bottom. Um, yeah look Rebecca's just mentioned about the little black puffer little tool that there is. Um, I don't have one handy, but I have something that Tim Holtz bought out ages ago. And it is the, it went with the, uh, what did it go with? Those crayony things. No, not the crayons. The, oh, what's the word, guys? Um. 
did some mark. There were some markers. Yeah, look, I'm I'm not a fan of the puffer, but I'm going to use it just to show you. I mean, it does look good. Distress markers. Thank you, Kirstine. I'm glad that someone's brain's working tonight because mine certainly isn't. Um, it's been a long day. It dries it a little quickly. But, hey, it works. So the puffers are available online as well. Okay. There you go. That blue that I just put on there then was the co... No, it wasn't. Maybe it was. Was it a glitter? Oh, shit. I don't know. Okay, so I'll start saying the colours as I put them on because clearly I've got no idea what I'm doing here. I'm just making sure that some of these are... I can push that air around a bit with that. So that's that black and glittery one I did earlier. That's kind of pretty. And the... All right. What else have I got here? Oh, I've got one that I did with the Ulta New um, embossing folder. Um, I've got a nice juicy coat and it was the one on the top right, top right here. That's the cobalt glitter. All right, how about we'll go with daffodil. Lots of daffodil. Look at me being a, a proper grown-up YouTuber. Don't they all do this? Lay them all out as they go through. Not my strong point. I have lots of talents, and this whole live Facebook thing isn't one of them. Um, no, Jeanette, I uh, you do use. You need to use a synthetic paper because Yupo is a. That's honey, by the way. Yupo is a synthetic paper and the alcohol needs to sit on top i will get some plain cardstock out in a minute and show you the difference okay i'll show you what happens with yupo uh, with plain cardstock okay this i've just put some copper on next and i'm just going to puff that around like that um uh, look what was that last question hang on linda any particular blending solution look i like the um i like this one which is the couture creations one you could use whatever brand you find but i do think the blending solution does actually work so much better than isopropyl alcohol hands down much 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 better um in fact if i just take some straight isopropyl alcohol and pop it on it kind of pulls a little differently as well it does work but it's not it's not great um it, and again it comes back down to that cost cutting thing that we all try and do where we try and save a few bucks here and there on on um on materials and i find that i always get caught out if i do that okay so I'm just going to do one more quick one in the blues and then I'll turn them into some awesome artwork, okay? I do love the blue tones. Um, so I'm going to go with Twilight. I'm going to pop some jade in there as well. I've got a fluoro blue. I've got some aquamarine. Let's just shove those that way a little shove 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 all right and this is quite a big piece but let's commit to it so i've got my blending solution down first and i'm just moving it around so i'm just layering a base for my color to stick on so i'm going to pop some jade first around the outsides And just let it do its thing and I'm gonna work in around so Jade 
a little bit of aquamarine. Uh, now, me telling you the colours is probably not much good. This, the company who has released these has changed the name of them, which is a pain in the ass. Uh, but you know what? Just go for colours that you love, guys. Go for things that make you happy. I'm going to put some amethyst down the middle. And then, and then, okay, I'm just letting it grab. I'm going to grab some of my plain alcohol on these edges just to help it move around. And I'm just going to let it sit here and just watch how it moves. Um, I've got lots of colour on, right? So I could probably take a little off using my pipette. And I shall funnel it onto this. And I'm working on a trestle table. Can you tell which way it's pulling? All right. So these make fantastic bases for cards. So if you are a card maker, you like to make some cards. Oh, that's so pretty. Then this will make a an awesome background. Um, I've got a stash, an, a huge stash of these backgrounds that I have made in the last few months, especially doing live Facebooks here with you guys. Uh, and I've got a really, really lovely stash ready to go. In fact, I've got them all cut up to turn into thank you cards to go in with your orders. So now that that's just air drying, so what's happening is the, um, the alcohol is evaporating, leaving the colour in the paper, all right? So that's looking pretty good. Um, something that other people love to do, and I've seen them do it on the YouTube thingo, is get some gold and run some gold through it. I am absolutely terrible at doing that. And just to prove how terrible I am, I'm going to give it a go. So I haven't got my gold handy, but I have got some champagne. So I'm just going to grab a little champagne and I'm going to do a drop. And I'm just going to push that around. Oh, yeah, see, I'm terrible at that. Dragged it through. So for those of you just tuning in, um, I'm just playing with alcohol inks. I'm I'm just trialing error, trialing new things, playing with new techniques, and wondering what would happen if I did something. There is lots and lots of trial and error and mistakes and things like that happening over here and I'm perfectly okay with that. So that was just a little bit of straight alcohol down through the middle and I have, yes ladies and gentlemen playing at home, I have completely ruined it. But I'm going to commit and then I'm going to put it aside to dry to just naturally air dry it, and I'm not going to touch it again, okay? Yes, I am. Hang on. Because I can't help myself. It's, it's evolving. I will take a photo of it when it's dry. So you'll just have to, it may be next week with the amount of ink that I've put on it, but that's okay. Okay, I'm just going to go and put this on the other table, which is opposite me. Bear with me just a second. 
interesting okay so let's have a look and see what i have produced here i have got this one so this is the one that i popped a little um fluoro in and some glitters so that's looking pretty cute i have got this trans uh this one here which has got the transparent paper but it's also got the glitter pink which looks very very cute i have got this one here which is oh that's actually gorgeous so that can you see how that has caught the the glitter has caught the embossing folder the tim holtz texture fade love that this is another one of the transparent ones so this is the green so there was fern kiwi and then the fluoro yellow with the transparent paper uh the black one's still my favorite but that is the the browns so honey and wine and a couple of others in there as well i can't remember those colors but look at that that looks gorgeous um oh where's that fluoro one here we go Woohoo! look at that i'm gonna do something here which is probably gonna mess this one up but i'm just gonna run some straight alcohol no oh yeah it's moving a little having a bit of a play but this one can you see how it's got this kind of smudgy area here i don't know if that's showing up on camera but that's the difference between the blending fluid and the isopropyl alcohol okay it's got this skid mark sort of area probably not the right terminology but you know what i mean um and that very first one that i did oh i spilt something on it i spilled some fluoro on it that's gorgeous the black the black looks great love that and this one here has got with with all the metallics and that's got that geometric embossing folder going on with it okay so there's a few really lovely backgrounds um what oh hang on and this guy which is still wet the um the glitter has held in the the valleys of the embossing folder okay and that's on transparent UPO as well. Um, okay, so what do we do with all of this stuff? What can I make out of it? Well, you can make whatever you damn well please, girls. Absolutely. You can do anything you want. So let me give you some ideas. I have got my... Oh, God. I've got my junk journal. Sorry, I've just realised. Um, there we go. I have got my junk journal here. And in the past, I have used in my junk journal some Yupo paper and some alcohol, alcohol inks. So this page that you are looking at right here, you may get a little reflection, of course, but that is done on one of the Scrap Effects transparencies, and I just coated it in uh, straight alcohol inks. Um, so to show you what it looks like, a piece of paper towel underneath it. So the transparencies look amazing. And this one is the, the motorbike magazine one. Okay, so popping a page like this into your art journal and adding all of that color, just gorgeous. Love that page. Then the other thing that I did is this one here is made up of a, it's on a transparency page again. But I decided to cut it into a tag. So one of these ones here that I have made, I cut it into a tag shape and popped on some words. So there's that one. And then I cut one exactly the same size on the other side. And this one's got a brick wall embossing folder in the back. I'm not too sure if you can see that on camera. Whoops, pulled my chair out. There we go. Um, and you'll also notice... This here 
has got stamping over the top and I used alcohol ink as my paper and then cut them out and added them to my art journal page. All right, so that works in your journal. Uh, I also, where is the, just finding another page. I had another one, here we go. So with this particular image here, I used one of the paper rose dies and it's the Builder Girl die and I cut her hair out of Yupo paper and layered it all up. All right, so she's got that mermaid thing going on. All right, that works. And here is the other half of my transparency paper there. And last but not least, this guy, one of my lovely dead people. Um, you'll find tutorials for most of these pages on YouTube, by the way, if you just look up Natalie May on YouTube. Um, these are the wings from the Scrap FX trans Transparencies, and I coloured those with alcohol inks and cut them out and stuck them down. So that will work really, really nicely. Uh, if I now want to take, I've got, I'm going to give myself five more minutes, and I'm going to make a quick tag, and I'll stick it onto my page. I will do it with this one here. Still got a bit of dampness on there. How do I get rid of that dampness? I could dry it with the heat gun or I could just stick my piece of paper towel over the top. Let's be honest, that'll work just as effectively. Um, how do I make a tag? Grab my Tim Holtz scissors. Now, most of you know that all Tim Holtz products today are 15% off and that does include scissors. So Tim Holtz dies, Tim Holtz embossing folders like I used to create this particular tag. Perfect. 15% uh, off and the uh, that is only until the end of the day. So if you have got a wish list of Tim Holtz products or papers, um, now is the time that you need to utilise that uh, because they will not be on special tomorrow. All right, what am I going to put onto this? A couple of things I can do. I've got these lovely silhouettes. These are Scrap Effects silhouettes and they will just look really nice on those. You can kind of see how hopefully you're not getting too much glare. So that one's nice. I like it. The leaf is gorgeous. And all of they are is a simple black cutout that you can pop onto your page. Oh, that's nice. Shortlist that one. There's a butterfly. Oh, I like that one. Shortlist that one. And this is what I used for one of those previous cards that I showed you earlier. So this is the steampunk guy and they are just, yeah, just the straight silhouettes that you can pop straight on. Uh, the other thing I can do is use, oh, use one of my words here and stick that one straight on so you can see that contrasting blue would look pretty awesome on the pink. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the heart. So it's just a black love heart made out of card, heavy, heavy card stock, but it is super detailed. You can see how detailed that is. All right. It's going to go on like that. And I'm just going to use my puzzle glue to stick that on. Just like that. Don't need to overthink it. Valentine's Day is coming up. There we go. That could be for somebody that you love. And I'm going to grab one of my paint pens from Pintor. So one of the Pintor paint pens. What have I got here? Don't want that one. I want the other size. But I can't find. Oh, here it is. 
no, that's the white one. Who's been messing around with my pens? All right, I'll use that one. So the Pintor paint pens are awesome because they will go over the top of just about everything because they are paint and they are really, really lovely to use. I have, uh, they're my paint pen of choice because they work almost perfectly 99% of the time. Other brands that I have used in the past, such as um, Posca and Life of Colour, I have found that they don't work perfectly every time. This one here, I didn't even have to prime it. I just went straight from, tested it on a piece of paper first, which I always do, and then just gave it a shake and straight on there. Okay, so this has got a little area where I can write, so I'm gonna pull out my paint pen in extra fine. Now, this one is almost empty. I do not know that this one will work, so I won't stuff it up. I'll use this one. This is the fine. Um, and what shall I write? Just be you, keeping it simple. Um, quick, easy little tag that could go on the front of a card and I will put that in with a customer order over this weekend. So that's it for my little demo. I will take some photos of these lovely little pieces, these fantastic pieces. I'll also photograph the ones that I don't like because I'm human, but they are drying up just gorgeous. Um, I will link the, the comment, uh, link the blah, blah, blah link in the comments like I always do the materials that I used um, and go from there. But um, so for the, those of you who don't know, of course, the no judgment postage is happening this weekend as well, which means that you pay postage one time on your first order. Then after that, you only pay one cent for postage and we put all of your orders together and we will be posting them on Monday and Tuesday, okay? So then that way, tomorrow's special, which you are going to freaking love, um, which includes some brand new product that only arrived in yesterday, um, that, that will be perfect. So um, there will be a three kilo weight limit on your postage but that is because you know come on guys I'm not made of money um you know how it works uh but yeah so there's lots of really cool things happening um so jump online to nataliemay.com.au the special will run until I go to bed tonight so Tim Holt's products are 15% off including his tools and the alcohol inks are also 15% off so get yourself a little um stash going in your cart and one thing i haven't mentioned one lucky order is going to get a little prize pack from me it might be a couple of orders actually i found some wonderful little prizes around the place so uh just enjoy and uh i will upload very very shortly the products that we used and go from there so thank you guys i hope you're all going to have a fantastic evening I'm off to go and have a glass of, I might pour myself a gin and tonic because I bloody well earned it today. Um, my brain's tired. And depending on how I go, I may pop in for a little surprise later. Um, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to flick me any messages. I will endeavor to jump back on here and answer as many questions as I can. Uh, and make sure that you all got all the relevant information that you need. Um, but, but guys, I'm human. Just ask me. Uh, as you can see, I'm really good at making mistakes and I don't try and cover them up because that's not how we roll around here. So um, I look forward to seeing you all at 9am tomorrow morning, Adelaide time. I will be back to tell you about the special of the day. And I will 
Look forward to having a chat with you all then. And then I've got another live Facebook at 10.30 tomorrow morning, all Adelaide time, but I'll put the schedule up of what it will be so you won't miss out. Alrighty. Chat soon, guys.